Hello everyone, FPS Chazzle here, and welcome back to my tutorial series. So this is going to be, I guess, the conclusion of the introductory tutorial series. We're going to bring together everything we've learned, and uh, we're going to actually do a real mission now instead of a tutorial. This is a quick mission. We're doing ASW Area Search, and we're at the Gayuk Gap. This is a it's a Greenland, Iceland, United Kingdom gap. And uh, yeah, so we're we're out here expecting to sink a few enemy submarines. And there's uh, this is on hard difficulty, so there's going to be a lot of like neutral shipping around to confuse us. So uh, the first thing we got to do is get our orders. So we're going to have to periscope depth here. Make my depth zero six. And seven, the way these quick seven, missions work is you just get your orders for this area search that give you a coordinates of where you're supposed to look. And uh, all submarines are going to be hostile, I believe. I don't. I don't think they put friendly submarines in these. At least I've never experienced that. And uh, as you can see, this sea state is pretty ridiculous. That's something else to do on hard difficulty. So you have to get pretty deep to get away from the noise that this makes. I don't think I've ever talked about that, but yeah, the worse the sea is, the deeper you have to get to get away from the noise. That that's mean like that surface clutter, as I like to call it. I like to call it surface clutter. And then, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of merchant ships. We can probably see them on the sonar right now. Yeah, there's someone right here. Let's go ahead and just start classifying them. So we've got two people right now that we can see pretty easily. And this guy looks like he's actually getting closer to us. Which one is this guy? Uh, I think if these are both service ships, I'm going to try and do one with the sonar. And then do one with the periscope, just to try and go over those methods again. Oh, I don't really remember the statimeter procedure, though. Eh, so hopefully I'll try and remember that. Uh, let me get my frequency sheet. If you have not printed out a frequency sheet, you probably should really helpful. Uh, let's go ahead and pause it right now. I'm going to go check this out. I'm not sure how long this is actually going to be. I'm going to just do the whole thing. And I maybe I'll get like highlights or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Let's see. Okay, so what are we dealing with? We got a frequency that's about 920 it looks like. And then there's another one up here that's like almost 2000. So it's probably civilian. So I'm going to go over to the civilian here. Yeah, okay, it's a freighter it looks like. Fourth frequency is 910, fifth frequency is 1931. So we got a freighter here. This signal's stronger here, so maybe. Uh, well, the problem with the periscope in this mission is that the sea state is utterly ridiculous. You pretty much have to surface just about to be able to use the periscope because the sea state's insane. But well, let's get our orders here. Raise the antenna. Keep the watch eye. And uh, yeah, so which one was this guy? It was up here. So this is a freighter. Yeah, if you, if you press a letter on your keyboard, it'll quickly like go to that letter in here instead of having to scroll through a competence high neutral got a freighter up in that direction yeah and then uh yeah, based on the sonar yeah ooh man it looks like he's about to get right on top of us here holy crap i hope he doesn't crash into us i should probably raise this up and look for him to make sure he's not about to crash into us here might have to crash dive or something well, let's see here i don't even know if i'm gonna be able to see right now in the sea state oh is that him right there holy crap oh my god he's right there <laughs> sweet jesus Okay, yeah, he was uh, almost on the collision course for us. God, that's close. Man, he's right there. That's crazy talk. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, let's go check it out on the... I mean, we've only had him for so long, there's only going to be so much of this solution right here. But he, Yeah, he's right there. He's basically going like the opposite direction of us. And no more than like 500 yards off our bow, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, so enter something like that, maybe. I don't even know what bearing he's on now. The bearing is changing so quickly. And it's like, at this range, he's like just taking up like, what is it? Like almost 60 degrees of bearing. But yeah, the middle of him. Yeah, look at that. I've never been this close to someone like that there. Yeah, we can go ahead and merge this and get on, working on our first master here. Uh, I, uh, we also got, a uh, based on the frequency sheet too, when you get to a ship, it tells you the TPK. I believe the TPK was 20. So now we can go and uh, figure out how fast he's actually going into the uh, demon display because I haven't had a chance to do this yet. Oh, why am I not seeing him on the demon? That is a good question. Oh, because we lost him in the baffles. He's now in our baffles. <laughs> okay, no, that's not true. That's not exactly true, so I don't believe that. He's not really that close. But yeah, he's now in our baffles. Uh, did we get our orders yet? Yes, we did. Alright, so I'm going to put this up and then um, I'm going to put these up on the map and then I'll be right back in a second. All right, I got the area up, and uh, as you can see, we got these marks here. So it's about in this square right here is where we're looking for enemy submarines right here. So we had this ship that just passed us. Uh, let's get the uh, 
the Toad streamed out here. I mean, yeah, he passed into our battles really quickly, so we don't really have much data on him. I guess I could turn to the west, but he's not of our concern, really, for the most part. Uh, we probably lost this guy over here to the surface clutter. Yeah, as you can see, like, it looks like we're going about, you know, like 13 knots right now, or 14 or 15 knots, maybe. But it's really just because we're this close to the surface. So I'm going to lower all this and let us get a little deeper here. Alright, yeah, I'll meet you back when we're deeper and we got the toad streamed out a good bit. Alrighty, we're back. We're at depth, 367. As you can see, the sonar has gone from really crap to, to nice to really good. You want this very dark green. So we have a lot of contacts here. Our previous guy from before has been moving quite a bit. Um, I, I guess we can go back and try and look at him and see what he's doing here too. It looks like he got close to us and is now heading away or something, unless there was a course change. So yeah, we're expecting enemy subs. And lots of civilian traffic. A cooler one improved, holy hell. Uh, okay, so the way the filter works is it just brings up the first one that could potentially fit that match, so don't necessarily believe that. It could also be a Los Angeles that also has 1100 as a fourth frequency. And it could also be... What else? I think that's about it. So if that's it, then yeah, that's a, that's a, we're going to go ahead and say that's an Akula. Yeah, it looks like it. It doesn't look like... Okay, well, a Spearfish Torpedo has it too, but I don't think it's a torpedo. So, yeah, it looks like we have a cool submarine out here. Goody. I haven't done one of these missions in a while with a, a difficult submarine in it. So we have him on the broadband here, so we can get demon data. I think I might have mentioned this before. You have to have a contact classified on the broadband to be able to get demon data on them. That's how it works. And he is going very fast, I can tell this right now. I have the, the TPK for turns per knot for basically any nuclear submarine in this game is 7 knots. There's not one nuclear submarine in the default game that has a TPK that is different than 7 knots. And then on that note, pretty much all diesel submarines are going to have 10 knots. So 7 or 10 knots is what you're looking for for a submarine. He's going 29 knots. He's not full bore flank, which is odd. So it's interesting. Yeah, he's going 29 knots. He is hauling. Let's go to Sierra 2, 29 knots. He might have, it looks like he probably changed course here at some point. Uh, yeah, sometimes in these missions they do weird stuff like that where subs are just like flying around or whatever. Oh, I wanted to hold this constant. Yeah, don't forget we can hold this constant. You're actually gonna, you're gonna want to do that to make sure it doesn't mess up. Uh, what we want to do, I have not classified him on the toad yet. Oh yeah, look at the toad. Wow. Con, sonar. I have a new contact. Uh, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of using the toad all the time. I like using it for long range detection, but if I can get closer to someone, I prefer to use the spherical. The reason for that, as you can see here, we have the same track here, and there's an odd kink in the track, but if you look on the spherical, that kink is not there, it's pretty much a straight line. So when you're bringing in Toad, letting out Toad, changing depth, or turning, basically, you're going to get these weird kinks in your data. So that's the reason I don't like to rely solely on the Toad for making solutions on targets, because you get weird data in it, and you need to make a lot of assumptions when you're making your solutions with this weird Toad data. But uh, yeah, I think this is our freighter that was behind us and there's there's a lot of stuff out here so let me go back to the spherical i like and then again in this scenario if i can hear him on the spherical i like to, I like to classify him on the spherical first because you get the uh, i guess i haven't been over this yet either but you get reciprocals on the toad so as you can see here we're going due north now just imagine we got this line coming back from us i'm very grossly exaggerating the length of this line but the way the toad works is it um it doesn't it can't it doesn't determine which direction the uh, the signal is coming from because I guess because you're worried about the, the orientation of the array at the end so it wouldn't really be able to tell which direction is true so it just it gives you both directions as a safeguard so the, the easiest way to imagine this let me go ahead and classify two of these guys so you can see that there's reciprocals here I call them reciprocals I don't know if that's the proper term that's just what I ended up calling them so what do we got here we got Sierra 5 here let me drop this one for a second it's a little confusing so we got Sierra 5 and Sierra 6 as you can see they're this line basically represents the, the direction of the toad and our course at the same time. So, as you can see, these two contacts are mirrored over this line here. So, that's how that's the how the mirroring of this works, if you're wondering about reciprocals. To clear this up, you got to do a course change, or you got to have them on a different, um, uh, multiple sensors. So, we have them right here on the spherical as well. So, you can use that instead of having to make a course change, but if you make a course change, one of these guys will stay true. This is the true one. So if we were to make a course change to the east, as you can see here, uh, the, the new reciprocal for that would actually be, it would come over here. So you would see it flip over to this direction here. So 
that's just like a little, a, a, a brief little quick introduction to how, I mean, I guess that's, that's pretty much all you need to know about reciprocals in that regard, so. Alright, so we need to get down to business here. We need to start classifying, marking lots of contacts. There are a lot of contacts out here. Now, the reason I'm doing a quick mission is because these are randomly generated, so unless you have the same random seed from the previous mission, you'll never know what's going on with these missions. It's always going to be different. And uh, I think I mentioned this earlier in the Sonar tutorial with trackers, maybe in the TMA tutorial. There are a lot of contacts out here, so we can only have trackers on so many contacts. So what we need to do is figure out who's who and figure out who needs to get the right tracker. So as you can see, there's lots of crap going on here. Uh, Sierra 2, so I don't really know what he's up to too much. He's, uh, he's running around like a madman. He's changing course, doing all kinds of stuff. I think he just stopped, actually. I don't have a tracker on him anymore. Let me get a tracker back on him. So let's go back to Sierra 2 and get a tracker on him. Oh, I think, uh, here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have I lost him? I may have lost him. I think he slowed down. Uh, in between that speed up, I also slowed down to three knots. That's pretty much going to want to be your principal speed for submarine operations here. If you go much faster than that, people can pretty much hear you. Okay, so it looks like we have... I'm sorry if I'm talking fast. I'm going to try to make a point of not doing it. We have a cruise ship here. What, are, what, what frequencies are we looking at? We're looking at... Yeah, 870 and then uh, like 1930 or something. So cruise ship, yeah, that's the only ship in here that really fits that profile, I think, if we go to this, yeah. So we have a definite cruise ship on this bearing. Who is this guy over here? Which one is that? 104? It's this guy right here. So this is a cruise ship. I'm going to go ahead and just classify as a cruise ship, so I know it's a cruise ship. I'm not going to deal with it too much. We don't want to waste a tracker on a cruise ship here. So, was that was it this guy? Yeah. As you can see, this is pretty much constant bearing, so he's moving in such a position, so... He's not really changing orientation relative to us, so he's probably heading, you know, like this way or something, maybe. Moving parallel to us, basically. Oh, what else do we have around here? Sierra 8. So a lot of this is you just need to figure out who is who, what's going on here. A yacht? Okay. Yeah, any of these really high, super high frequencies like this are usually not submarines for the most part. They usually don't have pretty high frequencies like this. There are a few exceptions. Um, but, yeah, I don't see anyone that has a frequency exactly this high. Except for, like, mini-subs and maybe, like, the odd diesel here or there. So, yeah, anyone that has a pretty much, like, a pr pretty much a high frequency like this, you can disregard that as being a submarine for the most part. And for the most part, most, as I'm looking through my frequency sheet here, most combat vessels do not have fifth frequencies that high either. So, yeah, really high fifth frequencies like this you're looking at merchantmen or civilians or something like that. So who was this guy? This was, uh, what bearing is this? 234. This is a, a yacht here, so we're going to go ahead and disregard him as well. So I'm not going to bother making solutions on those guys because we have people to hunt around here. Oh, did we get our Mr. Rakula back on here? Is this him? This is him right here, I think. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, that's not right. Who do we have here? Trafalgar, Great Britain. Okay, so we're running into this in the Redstone Rising campaign. This basically means you have a, an Akula. Unless there's an off chance that you have a Trafalgar in the mission, it's going to most likely more than not mean an Akula. Because they pretty much have basically the same frequency spectrum in this game. So we're going to go ahead and say Akula 1. And uh, let's see here. So in the quick mission, to figure out what you're trying to sync, you can just come to the mission status here. So we've got Akula 1 improved, Akula 1, and High Lung. So there's two Akulas out here. I haven't played a quick mission with that many Akulas in a while, so this is going to be dicey. Sierra 2. Uh, let's look at that. See, we got an age of six minutes. That means we've lost them. They've moved, he's moved into our baffles there, it looks like. So, uh, yeah, we're not getting any more data on him from the spherical. I think, no, it looks like it, he would be right here, so the signal strength just wore off, so he's pretty far away, it seems like, then. Sierra 2. Yeah, we're not too sure what he's doing. Probably a constant course, constant course and speed, maybe down this way somewhere. I'm not sure. Let's uh, go ahead and fiddle with it. But yeah, so you got your manipulation. Ooh, this is actually looking really good right here. That's looking pretty good. Has he slowed down? I don't know. Here we're looking at Sierra. What do we want? We want Sierra 
three. Yep, he's still moving. He's still moving at that speed. Yeah, he's he's hauling around. He's probably going to get down to the end of this area area here and turn around or something, but that looks like what he's doing here. So if he's going to proceed on that, that course there, then we can go ahead and just, uh, well, first let's merge this up. Yeah, and that's holding true, so it looks like this is a pretty good solution here. So, uh, yeah, we'll wait for him to come turn around so our Torp isn't chasing him because he got, like, speed differential problems. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, this is a con this is a curving upward, so yeah, he's heading away from us as this is getting more vertical here. So, yeah, there you go on that one. Oh, man, there's a, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in this mission. Let's see here. So we got... Let's try and just look at everyone we have here, track a review on the spherical, and try and figure out who we got. Oh, I guess I don't have any more trackers on the spherical. Okay. Let's see. Lots of people, lots of people. Sierra 10, bearing 099. Yeah, sometimes if you can't see them anymore, the, the, uh, the tracker is still able to pick them up. It's calling this a cruise ship as well. Wasn't this one a cruise ship? Are there two cruise ships? Let's see. So remember from before, the white line signifies this is a spherical sonar contact, and the purple signifies a toad contact. I'm not too sure if I specifically went over the colors, but yeah. White is spherical, purple is toad, and then blue is conformal. I haven't looked at the conformal at all yet. But yeah, spherical and conformal are where I like to do the majority of my solution making. But that requires you to get close to a certain contact. You have to get within a certain range to be able to utilize that, because they're just not as strong as like the toad. All right, so what am I? So who's this guy? We got like ten ninety or something. No, that doesn't really fit a cruise ship. It's kind of bugging out on that regard. Ten ninety. This is probably the other Akula. Potentially. What? Are, okay, so let me look at this high long. That has ten fifty. The high long. This could be the high long then. And we're picking up on this bearing here. Yeah, that kind of looks like it. It could also be the it could be the other Akula too. Yeah, so this is probably this is most likely a submarine right here. So we got a pretty good uh, you know guess of who it is. So we're gonna go ahead and pick high long. I'm just gonna say high long for the time being. Confidence medium hostile. So it seems like we have a potential high long out that way. Am I on? I am on the spherical right now. I still have them on here. Yeah. So let's uh, what what track is a Sierra ten? Should have them up here. Whoa! Wow. He is going slow. So he's probably pretty close then. High long TPK is a diesel. So ten. He is going one knot. He is barely maintaining steerage out here. And uh, how many uh, what how many blades does he have? He has five blades. So the number of lines in here signifies blades. So one, two, three, four, five. He has five blades. So yeah, this guy seems to be pretty close if he's going one knot. So let's go check it out. Sierra 10. Speed of one knot. And let's look at the data again on here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. There, there doesn't appear to be much of a trend to it. It's pretty much like a straight line here. So uh, I probably, I'm not sure, not too sure on the significance of that. But uh, I mean, there's only so much that you can fit with the one nautical mile here. He's probably pretty close. He is probably pretty close, you know. Let's see if we can get him on the toad. We should be able to. Yeah, right there. It looks like it's slightly curving downward, so we might be getting... Well, we wouldn't be getting closer to him if he's right there, if he's on one knot. So we might have, uh, it look, we might have just gotten to our closest approach and now heading away from him. So yeah, that's, it's kind of looking like that. It looks like it was a little more vertical, and then it tipped over here, and now it's like bending back out, bending back up ever so slightly here. Yeah, another thing when you're looking for freighters or civilians, they're loud. Like, look how loud this is. That guy is all the way, you know, down here at this point. And look how loud it is. They make a lot of noise. So if you see a contact that's that loud and you're pretty sure he's far off, you're looking at a freighter there too or something like that. So this is probably a pretty good guess as where he could be. I mean, at one knot, there's only so much the solution can do. So we, it, he could probably be, like, you know, as close as, like, this... Or then, like, as far as, like, this. So he's pretty much, like, you know, within this little range bubble here. So any solution you make will pretty much be able to find him pretty well. With someone going that slow, there's only so much the solution can do. So what we could do is we could do a little active ping here and get a, uh, a re uh, get 
an affirmation on his range here before we launch. Who is this guy right here am I looking at? I think this is the cruise ship. If, if you see like blips like this in the speed, that's usually indicative of like a fishing boat or a cruise ship. I don't know why the cruise ship is doing it though, it's kind of odd. You can kind of see it here on the intermediate, but uh, yeah, I guess that'll have to wait for next time. So thanks for watching everyone, and uh, I'll see you in part two of this uh, cumulative tutorial, and we'll continue hunting and tracking enemy subs here, and hopefully getting some kills. So see you guys then.